hello everyone we are gonna do the this video ends when i find a five star read tag i've been seeing a ton of people do it and it just made me want to do it because i haven't been finding that many five stars lately and no offense to the heiress rachel hawkins i'm getting into it i'm on chapter six i'm at 27 percent, but i haven't been obsessed with the heiress so far so i'm just i have a few books in the mail on the way i just got a blind date with a book in my last vlog which if you want to go watch that feel free and i just got this cute little pop socket and stand on my kindle so i'll link all of these things below because i feel like i have been reading so much faster since i got this since i can like stand it up and read that way Ooh, that was a terrible noise but anyway i will be ending this video once i find a five star read so we'll see if this is a very short video see if it's this one or if it is something else and if you have done this challenge please link whatever your five star read was or comment it below because i'm so curious to see if you have done this before which one your video stopped on. So we'll see which one I stop on. It might be a short video, it might be a long video. I've got some that are coming in the mail, we shall see. Okay, this is so unexpected. I just got home from listening to a bunch of it in the car and I'm now at 35%. And let me tell you, it has actually picked up. I am actually invested and I'm kind of maybe seeing why the reviews are so good. So I don't know maybe this will be a really really short video if this is a five star read i'll keep you guys updated the perspectives have changed and now it's kind of unfolding a bit more if that makes sense i just learned something fun when you bookmark something on audible by accident it will bookmark it on your kindle as well i am on i don't want to spoil anything i'm on 56 percent of the heiress just gonna put that on the screen so I'm not spoiling anything but it has gotten pretty interesting if you like the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo I feel like you would really like this I am just over halfway and I feel like now I'm sucked in it took me a really long time to understand who was who but now that I understand I really want to know what happens. So I think I might finish this tonight and then I think I might start maybe a Freedom McFadden. I think I have a book coming in the mail on Monday, so we shall see. See if this somehow becomes a five-star read or not. Okay, it's currently 2.08 a.m. and I think I know the twist. Like there are a couple, but I'm just filming this right now. Obviously, I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but I'm pretty sure... I know what the twist is. I feel like Rachel Hawkins is dropping some hints that if you're not paying attention to, you wouldn't think anything of it. You'd think they're just random pieces of the story, but I'm actually pretty sure I know what's gonna happen. So I guess we're gonna find out. I obviously don't wanna spoil you guys in case you wanna read this, but it's picking up for sure. I was really concerned, but like I said, I think in previous clips, it really is picking up. I think I have two hours left. Just calling it now, just had to record this, even though it's so early in the morning. I'm pretty sure I know where this is gonna go, and I think there's like a little secret. Oh, how do I do say this without spoilers? I think there's a secret with one of the characters. And okay, that's really so vague, isn't it? <laughs> there's a secret with one of the characters that we don't think there is a secret with, but there's already been something revealed where they were part of something we didn't think they were part of, and I think there's another one. I think that's the red herring, is we think we've already like discovered a twist, and now there's another one. So, I guess that's all I will say to not spoil it, but we'll see if I'm right. I'm totally gonna finish this tomorrow morning. Okay, I actually have an hour and 17 minutes left in the book. And this is so snazzy. I've been using my Kindle stand to read while I'm brushing my teeth because I have an electric toothbrush and if I read, I can't listen to audiobooks and I don't want to hold it. So stand coming in so handy. It is Sunday morning and my voice is so raspy because I just woke up and it is time to finish this book today. But first I need some coffee i like had dreams about this book like i was filming something at like two in the morning last night saying i thought i knew what was going on and i still don't know but i have like an hour according to the kindle thing like the timer on there first it's just time to make some coffee <laughs> obviously this is a reading channel but i had a lot of people when i made a short 
and I was talking about Crescent City, I had so many people asking about me about Nespresso, and I also talked about Nespresso in my last vlog, and I did like an unboxing of the coffees that I really like, and so I had a bunch of people asking about my little setup. So this is an Nespresso Virtuo. I don't know what the actual model is because I got it back in 2020 during quarantine and it did come with a little frother. Honestly, I don't feel like you need the frother. I just honestly use this hand frother because if you overfill this one by even just a little bit, there's like a little line in there. Yeah, there's like a line right there. You can kind of see it. But if you accidentally overfill that by even a little bit, then this thing just like spins out and overflows. There's a lid, but it like, it just still comes through the lid. It does do like hot and cold foam. So if you just want a little bit, then just don't overflow that thing and it's magic, but just do not overflow it or just get one of these little hand mixers because you don't need to pay for that if you don't want to pay for it. It's Those are expensive. And then I just have this little drawer. It gets dirty really easily because the coffee splashes onto it, but I have this little drawer where you can put all your little pods and it's super cute. I think it's nice to be able to see all the different types of pods that I have. So I can link that down below in case you're interested. And I just think it's the best thing ever. I feel like Starbucks tastes burnt to me now whenever I go <laughs> anywhere else to get coffee. And then I do make a lot of tea. So this is over here with the coffee station. And then on the side here, one of my friends asked me about this. Um, I just have some cinnamon, some stevia, and then I have like chai, what is this? I have like chai sprinkles. And this was from Chaiwala, which is um, Eamon and Beck. They're like travel YouTubers from Canada. I have their, um, I think they've rebranded since then, but I have their chai spices and cinnamon back there too. Usually I like to just use a random mug, but I did find this ember mug that my sister got me a couple of years ago. It's like the tiniest little thing. It doesn't hold very much, but my sister was kind enough to get that for me a couple of years back. She knows how much I love coffee. So I do like to use that one. It does need to charge though, and I need to find the charger. So I can do a review at, on this at some point. Basically what it is, is it has like this little coaster and it actually charges and keeps your drink warm. So you don't have to keep microwaving it over and over and over. Today, we're just gonna grab a random mug. I think I'm just gonna go with this one for today. See, you can see I frothed it and I wrecked the bottom, <laughs> but it's still a cute mug. And then I have so many different kinds. Like this one is so funny. This one is called Vivita and this one's a coffee. And it actually has, can it, does it say it on there? Yes, it has a vitamin B12 in there, which is so funny. Um, this one they discontinued, but I still have some in stock. This was the Bianco Leggero. It's a double espresso. Everyone was like obsessed with it. This one's a Puerto Rico limited blend. Although I feel like I just kind of want a Colombia coffee. So I'm gonna go down to my other stash where I keep more of them and grab some of that. So these are my two favorite coffees. Whoa. This one's like the pink-ish one. It's Colombia. I love this coffee. At first I was really just an espresso espresso person. I didn't love their coffees and something has happened since I got their advent calendar and now I'm obsessed with it. Um, and this is the Bianco Forte. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this one today, but I need a bigger mug than this. Okay, we're going with this one. This one's just so cute and aesthetic because this one says for milk, so you have to add a little bit of milk to it to really get all the flavors out. It's so funny that it's labeled like that everywhere, but you need a little bit of a bigger mug. That other one wasn't gonna do it. Just open the top of this thing. This thing gets really dirty really fast in here though sometimes. Plop it in there like that. Okay, I was trying to push it the wrong way. I don't know why. This thing just goes over like that. Press this button. Magic. If you've never tried cinnamon in your coffee, I highly suggest it. It is so good. It really makes it makes all the difference. Then I just mixed everything together. No rhyme or reason. There's cinnamon everywhere, but that's how you know it's gonna be good. Okay, I've got my coffee. I've got my book. Let's finish the heiress. As I was making my coffee, I just got a notification that I got an Amazon package that has a book in it. So let's check it out.
What's so funny is while I was making my coffee, I totally heard shuffling outside my door and I was like, what are the odds that this is the book that I've been waiting for? Destroy that package to open it. <laughs> it was so difficult. But look how pretty this is. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. This is so beautiful. I know the light's coming in the window kind of weird right now, but this is such a gorgeous cover. Oh, wow. This looks so cool. It's really soft too. I wish you guys could feel the cover, but this is beautiful. This is definitely on my to be read very soon list. It's just so pretty. And everyone's been giving this crazy high reviews. So I don't know if this could be the book that ends the, when this video ends, or like that ends the five star search. I don't know, it definitely could be. There's a couple more I really wanna read before I get back into fantasy because I'm kind of on a thriller kick. Part of me wants to read it right after The Heiress. We'll see. This is a giant book. How many pages are in this? Okay, I accidentally almost just spoiled myself, so I'm not gonna look very hard, but there's like 600 and something pages. This is also on Kindle Unlimited, and I have it rented right now, but I just really wanted the physical version because I have been trying to read more physical books, and it just looked so darn pretty. So this is gonna look so cute on my bookshelf until I'm ready to read it. So let's go give it a home and then I'll continue reading the area since I'm so close to being done. The detail. Can you guys see this? This is so pretty. I can't wait to read it. Okay, it's just gonna hang out right here with <laughs> Light Lark and House of Flame and Shadow and the Priory of the Orange Tree, which is also on my list. It looks so small next to these ones, but it's just because these ones are actually huge like very tall books but this one is still bigger than way bigger than i was expecting you can kind of see it's definitely looks like it has more pages than light lark by a lot love light lark i'm still thinking about these two that's why i have these two as like my first ones when you just come look at my bookshelf is because i am still thinking about one dark window i kind of want to reread it and then i'm really obsessed with light lark so gets to hang out here with the to be read or favorite book section until it's time to read it. So I realized I didn't even tell you guys what this book is about, but I got it back off of my shelf because it was just so pretty. It's like a fantasy book and it has dragons, which obviously coming off of the fourth wing iron flame situation, hopefully people are really going to like it. I really like it. Wow, okay. I've heard there's a lot of world world building in here. Okay, this seems really intense. Here's what the actual little tiny blurb says. That when the moon hatched is a fast-paced fantasy romance. Is it a romantasy or is it a fantasy romance? Hopefully it's, I don't know, I think I'm, I'm looking more for a fantasy romance right now than romantasy as much as I love it. I'm a little bit over the romanticy right now. For fans of witty banter and strong, sassy protagonists. Beneath the cover is an immersive, vibrant world with mysterious creatures, a unique magic system. Okay, love that. And love that blazes through the ages. You know what? I really wish more authors would actually do that. That is the coolest little thing. Because this, okay, this felt like a lot. But then this, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can do that. But look at, look at this art. I'm trying to get it to focus so you can really look at it. Like there's all these details. There's like these little sparkly pieces. And then the reason that I took it back off the shelf was because look at this little castle. Look at this tower here. And then also look at the reflection of Parker. Like look at the in her like in the water here. I know the lighting isn't doing me any favors because of the weird time of day, but this is just whoever designed this did an amazing job with the cover. Who did design this? Oh, <gasps> there's a map and then this. This is gorgeous. No wonder this took like two weeks to come because I ordered this a really long time ago and it just arrived. That Okay, well, whenever a book starts with a map, you know it's going to be good. At cover designs. I'm going to have to go follow these people or check out their work. I'm so excited to read this. Okay. Oh, no. No, I totally bent the cover out while I was looking at the map. It had to be done, I guess. I guess it was gonna happen at some point. 
So even though I had just gotten book mail and I had other things to read, like I still hadn't finished The Heiress, I was called to go find this book that all of my friends were suggesting, which was None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. And I had to go get groceries anyway, so I thought I would look through some of the different book sections and I got very, very, very distracted. So enjoy this montage of me looking through a ton of different books because I really want to be on a physical book kick. What was funny though is that every single book that I picked up that I was like, you know what, I actually want to read this. Every single book that I happened to pick up, I checked it on Kindle Unlimited and it happened to be there. So it didn't make any sense for me to buy them when I could just read them on my Kindle for free since I have the Kindle Unlimited membership. So I did end up actually purchasing two from Target and then I got in the car and I was like, wait, did I check these? And then I found out that they were on Kindle Unlimited. So I went back and returned them right away and I figured that I really just needed to finish The Heiress and I wanted to find None of This Is True, which wasn't at any of these stores and I also prefer paperbacks. I know that I'm weird in that, that a lot of people like hard covers better, but I actually prefer paperbacks and so I might wait until May or I might read it on my Kindle. We will see, but here's me looking at all of these other ones and I put a ton of these on my TBR. Sometimes I just record these to look back at so that, that way I can add them to my TBR to read later or I might pick them up once I'm done with whatever I'm reading right now. So enjoy and maybe you can add some to yours as well. Okay, so if you're looking for an espresso, like I talked about earlier, I would get one of these ones. What are they called? They're the Vir Virtuo Pop. These are like the least expensive ones. Um, they come in like really cute colors. Mine is this one, the Virtuo Next. Although it comes with that frother that's really expensive. So I would suggest if you're just like trying them out, I would try those. And then you can even get like Starbucks pods if you're really into Starbucks. So those are the ones I would suggest. Or if I had to get in a machine, I would just get one of those because they're so cute. And also I purchased this but then realized it is on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to go return it.
Okay, so I just got home and I have 33 minutes left of The Heiress. I was trying to read more while I was out, but I just couldn't. I feel like whenever I show a page, there's a swear word. Anyway, I'm 86% of the way done. So I'm just going to finish it. I'm just going to read for 33 minutes so we can be done with this and I can process my thoughts a little more. Okay, I can't show the page because it will spoil everything for this book in case you decide to read it. But I just want to say the thing that I was talking about at 2 a.m. last night, I totally called it. So proud of myself. I knew there was something with this one character that I was like, why would we be getting all this information if it didn't have to do with them? And it did. So proud. I'm almost done. Not totally done. And I'll definitely explain more in my wrap up as well. Right now, I feel like this redeemed itself and it's maybe like four and a half stars. So we'll see if it stays that way with the ending. I'm so close. I think I have like 15 minutes left according to my little timer, but I don't want to show you because obviously the page that I'm on, if I left the words up and you paused, it would spoil the whole entire book. Ending honestly was great, but I'm still going to say four and a half stars and obviously I can't do that here, so it is what it is, but next I think I'm going to read the physical book that I have so we'll see but anyway i'll give more of my thoughts i feel like i need to process the heiress a little bit it was really good it was just so different i really thought it was going to be a thriller and it just what it was but it wasn't it was really i don't know where i would place it i don't know it made me think i did guess the twist a little bit but i didn't guess the whole thing I don't know. It was really beautifully written, though. Like, Rachel Hawkins has a gift with words. It was really beautiful. So I'll include more information after I process this in my February wrap-up. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to hear more of that once I've had time to process. And I think... Oh, I actually kind of am super curious about the villa. I may read that at some point. I think... I think I'm actually going to read A House Across the Lake next. So I'm going to find my little book light and I think I'm going to start this all day today. I looked for None of This is True by Lisa Jewell and it's in hardcover everywhere. Apparently the paperback comes out in May and I really prefer paperbacks when I'm reading them. Honestly, I know a lot of people are the opposite and they only do hardcovers, but I really prefer paperbacks for physical books. So... I may just read None of This Is True on my Kindle, but I haven't read a physical book in a really long time. So here we go. Let's see if this one is going to be the five star one that ends the video. I'll keep you all updated. Okay, I actually just read. I sat down and read. I know that doesn't look like a decent chunk, but it actually is. Like obviously I don't have my Kindle to tell me <laughs> um, how far I have left, but I feel like I just read a decent chunk and honestly it's good so far. I was a little confused at the beginning, but um, I don't, I just realized also that I need a bookmark and I don't have one. <laughs> like I don't have a dedicated bookmark. So getting a random Magic the Gathering card that my boyfriend gave me as my bookmark. <laughs> so thanks for that. And I don't know, I feel like this is going to be a really fast read. I do like this light, but I think I just need to read in a place that has better lighting in general because my couch is really dim, so it's nice and relaxing, but then I felt like my eyes were going to fall out of my head. So I'm going to go do a few things and then I'll come back and I might just keep reading tonight. We'll see. It's really good so far. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm really liking this book so far. Here, I need to take this sticker off, but I can never peel these off very well. Here's the problem is I want to talk to everyone about these books. Like I want to talk to everyone about the heiress. I want to talk to everyone about this book. I want to talk to everyone about the teacher. Like in my last vlog, I was like, oh, comment below. But then we can't spoil other people. So I'm going to put my Instagram over here on the screen. So that, that way, if you want to DM me, we can talk about it there. Or you can put a non-spoilery comment, but we just don't want to spoil other people. So if you would like to talk about any books, I would absolutely love that. So please message me on Instagram 
I'll keep you updated about this book. This vlog is really long already and I wasn't expecting it to be this long and I don't know how long it's gonna be before I find a five-star read so it might be this one. I really, who knows how long this is gonna be but I hope you're enjoying it so far. So oh, this is truly a first world problem and I do really like this book light but I feel like I don't know how to read a physical book anymore. I'm on page 36. It's a really good book and I feel like I'm enjoying learning more about the characters. Although this has some weird connections to the heiress, which is kind of funny because the heiress had some connections to the teacher. But I just feel like I would be enjoying this so much more if I was reading on my Kindle because I could actually lay down and not have to worry about the book light falling out of the book. So I don't know, I'm going to push through because I want to have the experience of having read a physical book, but I think I really do prefer my Kindle. I was thinking about doing a video where it was like reading without my Kindle for a week, but now I think that I'm more than just emotionally attached to my Kindle. I think it's more of a utilitarian thing too, which is interesting to find out this way. Okay, so I think it's so funny how there are in this book like references to, like it's where it says from the Fitzgerald place and obviously this book is called the house across the lake and it's very much filled with references that remind me of the great gatsby in a good way but it's just a little more modern so i wonder if um the author was inspired by the great great gatsby i don't know but basically so far i've learned a lot about certain characters there's been a tragedy we're getting set up to where i think something bad is gonna happen with one of the characters especially because of what happened in the prologue so i don't know i think we're I think things are ramping up i'm on page 70 so it's a pretty quick read honestly Okay, something really cool about this book is I do like the like the dramatic that this page is just black. So it goes back and forth between like a now and then, I guess, like a past storyline. It's kind of cool too how you can see that reflection. Um, it's getting caught in the book light because I need to adjust it, but you now it's very dramatic when you change perspectives. And I'm already on page, what is this? Oh, okay. So we're going from now to before we get these like little snippets. Interesting. But I'm like, I'm flying through this. I don't know if you can see how much I've read. It's time to put it away for the night, but I feel like I've really made a decent amount of progress. It's the next day. And I'm officially on page 123. Honestly, that's like a, a good third, I feel like, of way done. And there aren't chapters, but I do feel like I'm pretty invested. I do want to see what happens. I'm really missing my Kindle. I'm not going to lie. Like, it is kind of satisfying to turn the pages and see how far you are. But I just really, really, really miss my Kindle, so I'm enjoying reading this just as it is. But next book I read, I think will be on my Kindle because I just really miss it. But I'm really liking the characters on this. It's such a fast read, which I feel like I really needed after The Heiress. I think I mentioned that earlier, but um, The Heiress just felt like it dragged a little bit, even though it was so good at the end. But this one, I feel like I'm just flying through, so I'm going to read for like maybe half an hour and then I'll update you to see how far but maybe right now as far as stars go this is like maybe a not gonna lie like three and a half four so I don't think this is gonna be what we end the five star read video on but I am thinking about creating a TBR jar because I don't know what to read next I can't decide and I feel like it's unfair if I just decide to read something that I think I know is gonna be a five star read just to end the video like I feel like that wouldn't be the right spirit so I might make a TBR jar after I finish reading this one. We'll see what ends up happening and what I end up reading this one. I made myself like a little protein coffee situation and I have decided I am gonna make a TBR jar because I wanna make sure that the next book I read or just like when I do this in the future, I have a more 
diplomatic way of choosing my next book. So if you have any book suggestions that you think I should add to my TBR jar, please comment them below and I will make sure that I add them and I think that will really help me to get some input for my next vlog. So please, please, please comment books that I should add to my TBR jar. I love thrillers. I love fantasy. Um, I love mystery. I love just regular fiction, but I think fantasy and thriller are my two favorite genres. So, and like, I, I do like throwing in an occasional historical fiction, but I don't really care what genre it is. Just comment below a book that I should add to my TBR jar. So I am officially halfway done with this. Exactly 50 according to Goodreads, but honestly, according to this, it looks like it is maybe even, let's see, a little bit more than halfway. I don't know. Things are starting to get really weird. I'm not so sure about any of the characters. Like, you know when you're reading and you're just like, I don't know if we can trust the narrator. I don't know if we can trust the people that we think are being put in here as like allies to the narrator. The person in trouble, I don't think we can trust. We just got a weird confession from the guy who, like, I just, who knows? I don't want to give any spoilers, but I have absolutely no idea where this is going to go because I feel like I can't trust literally anyone in this book. It is 2 a.m. and I can't sleep, but I am going to have to try and sleep and finish this in the morning. I just went and checked my mail and I got the seven-year slip and the this reading journal, which... A friend actually sent this to me and a friend recommended this one to me and I was on my physical book reading kick so I was like I'll read this physically even though now I kind of wish that I had it on my kindle but you know what? it's okay maybe I'll read it next I don't know I was thinking about reading Don't Lie or Never Lie by Frieda McFadden but maybe I'll read that next I don't know because I'm wondering if it's gonna be a five star I've heard such good things about this so I'll either be reading Never Lie or this next and then this reading journal is so cool. It has like different books for you, like a different, not different books, different pages for you to write things down. You can do your reading log by month. And then it has different pages where you can write down like, I don't know, I thought this one was so cool. The title, author, start, finish, date, how you read it, overall, thoughts, some quotes you can add. There's just like tons of pages for that. And then, Oh gosh, there's so many pages for that. Okay, this could last forever. I think they're, maybe it's at the beginning. I thought I saw a preview for other types of pages, but maybe I missed it. Oh, you can check off daily reading. That's really cool, like by month. I think I'm gonna start using this and that way I can kind of remember my thoughts better because I have been reading so much that it's all been running together a little bit. And then this one, this one is about a magical apartment where these people are like in the same place but a different time which kind of reminds me of meg cabot's mediator series if you ever read that that's what this kind of reminds me of only i don't think it's ya so i'll keep you updated about that i have some reading time where i think i'm going to go see how far i can get in the house across the lake and i might start writing some thoughts down in here i'll link both of these below in case you want to check them out and also, please do, I'm going to make my TBR jar. I might even start it tomorrow. So number one, please comment a book suggestion below for my TBR jar, any genre. And then number two, please subscribe to see it because I might combine it in one of these videos or I might just make it its own video depending on how long it is. So thank you very much for the recommendations. I'm so excited to make that. my lights flickering like I live in some sort of medieval castle. I don't know why they're so flickery, but giving a little bit of a gothic vibe, like a little one dark window vibe perhaps. Okay, 
so i just filled in my reading journal i feel like the lights are flickering so badly and i don't know why this is so funny i really started off so strong with all these five star reads then i had a little bit of a slump in every summer after and then i just started reading house of flame and shadow then i read the teacher and i meant to give that one like four and a half stars there they go i don't know what's going with lights then we had the heiress and then we had the house across the lake i had to like try and not spoil myself while looking at this one um while looking at how many pages it had because i didn't have it on my goodreads challenge yet what is with the lights i'm gonna make a tbr jar and then i was gonna maybe i might go back and fill in all of these things and if i do i'll time lapse it just so you can see it because like i was saying earlier there's like all these pages dedicated specifically to each book and i wish i had been filling this out all year but i don't know if i want to go back and do this what's funny is like this is the index so like i'm supposed to put which page it's on but i just decided to put how many pages were in it so that i could quickly add up how many pages i read each month and each year so i'm kind of repurposing that a little bit differently than what it's meant for and then let's see what other pages are in here we have a daily reading tracker so i could start checking that off actually what's really cool is on my kindle app you can look and see what days you read and i think i'm on a streak i want to say i'm on like day 46 or something of my streak on my kindle app so i have to check that but i could start checking this off reading log per month very cool oh cute it has a little bookshelf that you can like color those in that's the cutest i've always wanted one of those wish list this will be great because i'm about to make my tbr jar either right now or tomorrow so it's nice to have the wish list oh if i'm borrowing or lending that's cool because i might actually lend one of these to a friend so i can remember where it goes and then it starts it on these pages really cool well i'm definitely going to start this either with this book that i'm currently reading or the next one whether it's the seven year slip never lie i don't know what it's going to be this one is kind of driving me crazy that i can't read it with an audiobook like i'm so used to having the audiobook that goes with the kindle version so i was thinking about either reading i have both the audiobooks from the library right now for, for the seven year slip and never lie so i was thinking about like flipping a coin to see which one of those i read next or maybe i should just go to like a fantasy book i don't know i might have had it with thrillers but i'm still looking for the five star it could be this one i have no idea i'm leaning toward the seven year slip just because I feel like I need something different than a thriller, but I know this one's going to be a really fast read. I don't know. I'm going to see how much progress I can make on this one. I am taking a bunch of classes <laughs> for a recertification, and they're taking me so, so long. And all I want to do is read and avoid all of my responsibilities, but I have to balance it. So we'll see how long this one takes me. I'm hoping to have this vlog done <laughs> and then start another one. But if I don't find a five-star read, then as you know, this, this video could just keep going on forever and ever and ever. So maybe I will ask you guys on YouTube which one I should read next and, and have you guys help me. And I'm thinking about doing just like a time-lapse if I do fill this in. I think I am going to do like a time-lapse of this as well as my TBR jar. So definitely subscribe to see that video because I think that one will be a standalone all by itself. Okay, so that was weird. It had like supernatural elements. Like I was totally not expecting that. I did not think that this had supernatural. I thought it was like just a thriller, but it definitely had some fantastical elements to it. So I am gonna be super honest, but I don't think I can handle any more thrillers at this time. After just finishing that one, I think we're going to go with the seven year slip because I just need something a little happier and maybe that one can be kind of like more magical realism in a less thrillery way than this one. So it'll be kind of been, like all these books that I've been reading have oddly been connected. So I guess maybe that can be the connection to the next one. So I'm going to go get the seven year slip and I'm going to start reading that one. Although it's so tempting to buy it for my Kindle because reading this physically was not a long book 
and it was really fast, but I didn't love it. I missed my Kindle so badly because I had to use this little light to be able to even read just when it was kind of dim, not even at nighttime. So I am just so used to that darn Kindle. I might get the seven year slip on my Kindle if I like it enough. Maybe I'll read the sample and then I'll just keep the book as a trophy if I like it. So I'm gonna go get it right now. Here's the seven year slip and what I'm going to do is okay so now we have a sample of the seven year slip that I can read on my Kindle. I have missed you so much. Let's see, this one usually takes six hours and 57 minutes. It's a gorgeous love story from one of the finest romance writers out there. That sounds like exactly what I need after reading The House Across the Lake. I don't know, I need to process that one to decide what I'm gonna rate it, but it's not the five star. It's maybe like, I hate to say like three and a half, three star. So we'll see if this one could possibly be the five star. I know it's ridiculous to read this on my Kindle when I have this right here, but again, maybe it'll just become a trophy. Maybe I'll gift it to a friend, but I have missed my trusty Kindle and my little pop socket invention. So I'm so excited to back reading on this. Okay, I had a crazy long day, but I managed to get a little bit of reading time in. I'm now 14% into the seven year slip. I really like it. We just got to like the slip in time, I guess. I don't want to spoil anything, but I don't really understand it so far. So I hope we get more details about it. But so far, this is like a really fast read. I think I only have, let's check. I think there were some swear words on this page. Um, I have three hours and 30 minutes left in the book and I'm at 14%. So honestly, a pretty quick read. I love this cover, like when it's just sitting here on idle mode. It's really cool because it has like the grayish background and most Kindle books have like a darker background so it blends in with the bezels, but this is just so pretty to have sitting around. So I'll be sad when I'm not reading it anymore. So I'm excited to see what happens. It kind of reminds me so far of like the proposal meets like the time traveler's wife, almost. So if you like either of those things, this one might be for you. I like how it says, second, never fall in love in this apartment. And clearly we just know I'm 22% in, like if it says never fall in love, it's kind of like when it's like, stay away from this character. Obviously something's gonna happen. We just know it. And I have a feeling that I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm like, it, does he know her? Like, does he know more than we know that he knows? So I guess we'll see. I love this little quote at 25% where she says, new things are scary. Cause I feel like sometimes I feel that way too, even though sometimes I want to be adventurous, but I sometimes am not. And then he says, they don't have to be. And she says, how are they not? And he replies, because of some of my favorite things I haven't even done yet. She says, how do you know they're your favorite? I just love this. I think this is going to be a really good book and I'm already 25% in and I feel like I have read this so effortlessly. So really loving the seven year slip so far. So something that's really interesting about this book is that it is magical realism. So it took me a little bit to learn like the world building portion of it. We're finally getting to like understand the rules of the apartment. And what I want to know is, I guess I'll find this out, but I want to know is if she does something in the past, since we haven't gone back to the future yet, I don't think. I think if she leaves the apartment, she goes back to her regular time, but as long as she's staying in the apartment, it's the past, is what I think I've learned. But I want to know if she does something in the past in the apartment, does it change the future? It's one in the morning, but I have got to know the answer to this question. The where is he now? Okay, this book has got me 37 percent in like do i stay up until four in the morning to read this because i also have to know where is he now this is very like time traveler's wife ish but like less sad so far okay this book is insane i i feel like i haven't felt this excited about a book in so long and i think this might be the five star but i'm freaking out like i have to know what happens two hours I don't know I just read like 
in not that long since I recorded that last clip and I have to know what happens like this is the cutest story I don't want to spoil anything for you guys but this is just it's making me so happy I, I need for you guys to read this I am reading this so fast to find out what what is going on like I'm now at 50%, so exactly halfway, and I, again, I asked this question, like, earlier today or yesterday, I can't remember, does whatever she does in the past impact the future? Because that could easily change the plot of the entire book, and I'm so scared but so excited at the same time. Okay, this is so funny, there are so many Lord of the Rings references in this book and I love it because it's not a fantasy book but I love any book that's just randomly referencing Lord of the Rings in hilarious ways oh my god I knew it okay I might just stay in stay in okay I might just stay up and finish reading this because I'm now at 65% I'm either gonna have to find a stopping point or just finish the darn thing because this is crazy this book is so good. I indeed fell asleep last night, but I think I have like 45 minutes left. Yeah, I'm at 42 minutes left and 68%. So let's go ahead and finish this book. I just finished the seven year slip. It was so good. It was so cute. It really was a quick and easy read. Like it's it's not a short book, but it's not a really long book either. Like I'm used to reading these 800 page books. This I can very excitedly tell you was a five star read. So this video will be ending on this book right here. I suggest this to everyone. I literally just wrote on my Goodreads review. I wrote this book felt magic. It just it made me feel some type of magic that I haven't felt in a while while reading a fiction book. Loved the magical realism. I did get kind of stuck a little bit at one point toward the end but then it all kind of I don't know it it figured itself out. So I was like, I don't know what's happening. Maybe this won't be the five-star read, but then it figured itself out. So definitely loved the writing. There were a few things that were repetitive in there, but honestly, it wasn't enough for me to care. The story and everything else was just good enough that I love this book to pieces. It was magic. Everyone should read it. And now since I have found my five-star read, it is time for me to either start when the moon was hatched. I also have Heartless Hunter but I really want to read that on Kindle and I'm so close to having it on Libby. Did get it from Book of the Month too. And we also have the trusty TBR jar. So if you would like to see what I read next, make sure you subscribe. Please like this video if you enjoyed and you want to see more videos like this. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and supporting my passion for reading. I'll see you guys in the next video.